Time. That's all right. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Aaron Mitchell, the assistant pastor of Brian Baptist Church. I'm glad you could join us this morning for our Sunday school class. This morning, before we begin, we have a few that we need to bring before the Lord in prayer this morning. Um, Mrs. Betty this morning, pastor's wife, has fallen this morning, so I'll be doing both services, the Sunday school and um, the morning message, unless pastor can make it back, which I, I do not believe he'll be able to. Um, we also have Brother Don Moore, faithful member of our church, him and Pat. They do a lot of the work around here. Brother Don, if you haven't seen on Facebook already, has fallen off his bike. And um, we just pray for a speedy recovery with him. He has broken ribs. Uh, I believe he hit his head pretty hard. Um, and we just hope that uh, the Lord will heal him quickly. We've also had many, many prayer requests come in. Miss Marilyn's brother, David, who was diagnosed with inoperable thyroid cancer as well. Um, also, um, Brother David brought a request of a friend who's younger than him, um, and she has cancer as well. So it seems like there's bad news all around, but we ought not to, we ought not to, to fret as those who have no hope. We need to be able to come to the Lord as we do um, in our faith and be able to lift these up and pray for them. And if it's the Lord's will, they'd be healed and, and on their way. And we always want to make sure we put God at the forefront of any calamity that's taken place. Um, we also, if you didn't see the post on Facebook, um, because we haven't been meeting as a church, we haven't been able to gather uh, the support for the uh, three missionaries or national pastors we support in the Philippines. Um, so they've, uh, they've really been struggling. They've been on a lockdown. Um, can't really get out and have the freedom like many of us here in America have had. <laughs> Obviously, many of our states are going on lockdowns as well. Um, but theirs, I believe, is just a little bit more severe. Um, their military is not as nice or their police force is not as, uh, I guess they don't respect their rights. And some would beg to differ that Ours tend to be a bit abrasive as well, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but we need to lift up all those that we know in prayer, and especially this morning, uh, the nation, our nation, and around the world, um, those that we care about and know, um, and those that we love. And we need to pray for them, that there'd be a great physical healing, a spiritual healing, and those who do not know the Lord would come to a saving knowledge of Him. Um, before we begin our study this morning, um, I would like to keep those things um, in our minds as we go to the Lord in prayer. Usually in our Sunday school, we have about a 10, 15 minute prayer time before I begin. Um, and just remember any donations that are collected or any donations that you feel you need to send for our, our, as a Sunday school class, the missionaries or missionary national pastors we support above your tithe and your offering. Um, send that to uh, pastor's address or the church and pastor or I can get that to Brother Jan and then we can get the money to them as quickly as we can. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask that you would meet with us as a people. Lord, there's many sitting at home today that have tuned in this morning. Lord, I ask that you would meet with them. Lord, every one of us, if we were honest, has a need. Every one of us has a, a burden that we bear. Many of us bear them every day. We don't tell others the burdens that we bear. A lot of times we just... We hold those things in because people will say, I pray for you, and, and nine times out of ten, they don't. 
and so we hold them in. Lord, I ask so this morning as a church, as a Sunday school, the gathering together, each one in their home, that we would lift Miss Betty up in prayer. Lord, I hope she's okay. Lord, help Pastor to be able to comfort her. Help her to find comfort in his arms as he tries to take care of her this morning and get her the attention she needs. Protect her if she has to go to the hospital, Lord. With this coronavirus and everything that's going on, we're still not at the end of our flu season. Lord, protect her health. Lord, I ask that you be with Brother Don as well. Protect him. He had to spend time in the local hospital. And I ask that you'd meet with him this morning. Protect him as well. Lord, put a hedge of protection around our members. Help them to use common sense during this time of trial. Lord, I ask that you would be with the one that has cancer this morning, David's friend, that you would comfort her as well. Lord, I ask that you would be with our Filipino friends and all the missionaries we support. We've grown to love and care for all of our missionaries. This is a church that we really love missions. We believe in the Great Commission, not just around the world, but in our local area as well. Lord, I ask that you would meet with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord sometimes works in mysterious ways. I had a different lesson prepared for Sunday school this morning. Um, and I believe that the Lord had me prepare that because nothing takes him off guard for the church service at 1030 today. So continuing our study, we left off with false prophets and and those that, that cause trouble, dissension, um, those that are out there that will destroy our nation, destroy our churches, lead people astray. Jesus, I believe, gives the best account of this, not in Matthew 24, Mark 13, or Luke 21, or 17. But turn with me in your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter number 7 as we begin our study this morning out of the Word of God. Matthew chapter number 7. These will be familiar passages for many of you this morning. Um, but hopefully we can strengthen our resolve, strengthen what we believe, and stand firm on the Word of God this morning. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 15, the Bible reads, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that it would be your words this morning and not mine. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would move through the members of our church this morning, that they would glean something from the Word of God this morning, some good fruit. Lord, just purge me and correct me in any way. 
and let your Holy Spirit work this morning to those that aren't in attendance to our church, but that they would be able to profit from this, your teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> we need to keep in, in mind that not everybody we listen to on the radio, on the television, the books we read, I've said this before, um, many of them are not a good shepherd. They're a hireling. Um, and many of them will produce a false conversion. And therefore, according to what we learned last night, they make someone twofold more a child of the devil than they themselves. Why? Because if they're preaching a false gospel or a false doctrine and someone thinks they are already squared away with the Lord, then they're going to shut their ears and not listen to what you have to say coming from the word of God. Therefore, they are twofold more a child of the devil than the false prophet. But I want you to notice something this morning in verse 24 through 27, that Jesus is our rock, that we need to found what we believe out of the word of God on Jesus Christ. Why? Because when the winds come, like right now, when the trouble comes and the false prophets arise, just like in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, when the false prophets come, they'll be able to pull you away with every strange doctrine trying to give you hope. You know, the Jehovah's Witness, I beat on them a lot. This is a stronghold in the area. They're going to come to you and they're going to say, didn't God say in these different passages in his word that trouble's coming? But don't worry about it. Just pray to Jehovah. Just do the works. Just go around and knock doors and everything's going to work out for you. This is the problem. When the winds come, when the floods come, when everything in your life seems to be falling apart, the false prophet comes, the false teacher. But I want to protect you this morning. I want to protect the flock using the word of God this morning. I want you to notice a few things about a false prophet this morning. Um, Number one, I want to know. I want. I, I just want to point this out as well because too many people have just cherry picked different ver different passages out of the Bible, and they've labeled that to the individual. Look, here's what I want you to see in verse number seventeen. Every so, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And a lot of times people have taken this and they've labeled the Christian or they labeled the saved person who hasn't lived for the Lord. They'll lump them into this category. And we need to be really careful with that because not every Christian brings forth good fruit. Not every Christian, not every saved person does what they're supposed to do right? Not everyone who professes Jesus Christ as their savior is going to produce fruit. That's just the facts. But does that mean they're not saved? No, that's not what that means. You know, some people are just going to be saved by fire. Some people are going to have everything they've done in their life burned up at the end but yet they themselves shall be saved. It's either in 1st or 2nd Corinthians. Can't remember offhand. But the truth is, this is not talking about the average person here. This is talking about the false prophet because the false prophet or the false teacher is not going to produce good fruit. They're going to produce a corrupt fruit that's going to lead you in the wrong direction. Verse 17, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. You know, if I'm saved and I'm up here teaching the word of God and I'm preaching the good fruit of the gospel, I'm preaching the true rock, which is Jesus Christ. If I'm preaching the gospel the right way, I can't bring forth evil fruit. I can only bring forth good fruit. I can only convert people the right way. You may, you're going to hear that, I guess, in the, in the message this morning at 1030. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And we see a lot of the false religions today bringing forth corrupt fruit, do we not? We see people clinging on to their religion, clinging on to anything but the Bible in order for their salvation. They're clinging on to every wind, every, everything that comes by, every new way of worship under the sun. But the Bible says there's no new thing under the sun. 
Verse 19, every tree that bringeth forth, bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, a lot of times Christians have said, well, that person can't be saved because I can't see their fruit. Hey, listen, I've heard a lot of false teachers on the radio say, you're, you're a fruit inspector. You're not judging them by their fruits, but you're just a fruit inspector. Hey, pride cometh before the fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Who gave you the right to inspect the fruit of a fellow believer? You didn't go through what they went through early on in their childhood. Everybody has come up a different way. Everybody has come to the Lord under different circumstances. You can't say that the person that never had a Christian upbringing, never had anybody in their family who was saved, that that person should be where you're at today because you're the fruit inspector. You're judging them according to how you're not judging yourself. Unfortunately, we place a lot of judgment on people. See, if you to go back to the first part of Matthew chapter 7, the Bible reads, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Hey, be careful when you judge someone. It's okay to judge the false prophet. Why? Because you can judge him by his fruit. But the Christian you need to be careful of. Why? And with what measure of meat it shall be measured unto you again. Because you're going to be judged with the exact same judgment you're judging others. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? He's not saying don't judge. He's saying be careful how you judge. Verse 4. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thy own eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. You know, a lot of times we can be real judgmental and we don't realize we're walking around with a big railroad tie sticking out of our own eye. And someone who hasn't had the, I guess, the uh, good fortune of being brought up in church or around people of God, we, we judge them harshly or almost too harsh. We need to be careful. See, because see, here's the thing. We need to be careful in our judgment on how we judge others. Verse five, thou hypocrite. I'm going to say something here. You know, a lot of people say they won't come to church because it's full of hypocrites. I always say, come, join us. Because really, honestly, none of us live the way we should, including me. And the truth is, there's always something every one of us needs to get right in our life. None of us have reached a sinless perfection. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we lie and deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But he says here, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Look, hey, there's a way in which you should judge. There's a way in which you should, and it's called the way of helping others. That's why the Bible says we need to go to church, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting each other, picking each other up, encouraging each other, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. And I feel like in the world today, we can see the day approaching closer and closer. But here's the warning Verse 6, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Keep that in your mind this morning. There are dogs out there. There are dogs. Now, wherefore by your fruits ye shall know them. Who is Jesus talking about? He's talking about the false preacher. He's talking about the false prophet. Because when they stand before him one day, and make no mistake, Jesus is Lord. That's what the Bible says anyway. Verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied 
in thy name. Hey, hey, Jesus, didn't I use the name of Jesus when I preached this morning? Didn't I not, as the Mormon, say, hey, I believe there's a Jesus. As a Jehovah's Witness, hey, we know that Jesus is the Son of God, but he's not God. Hey, the Muslim believes there's a Jesus. Hey, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot preaching in his name today that does not make them saved because they use the name of Jesus. And in thy name, cast out devils. Hey, just because somebody's running out there being spooky, acting weird, running out, clutching a crucifix, tossing holy water on the threshold of your door, doesn't mean they're casting out an exorcist. I just, it, anyway, that's a weird one. And in thy name done wonderful works. Wonderful work. You know, there's a lot of good things we as Christians should do. But listen, many of these people that are false prophets, they're only concentrating on the works. They want to go out and they want to open a food pantry, but they're not feeding their soul. They're, they're more concerned about feeding their belly, and you should. You should take care of those in need. I'm not against it. But if you never give out the gospel, you care more about the work. And we see, we can see that more today. We need to be careful. Look, we should be eager to help those in need. I'm absolutely for it. But when you help someone in need, you also need to help them spiritually. You need to give them the rock of our salvation. You know, out of the rock flowed water, uh, living waters, right? That quenched the thirst of the Israelites. Hey, guess what? The manna from heaven, the bread of heaven, the bread of the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every, but out of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Right? But these people are only doing the works. Lord, Lord, did I not knock on all the doors and hand out a watchtower and track society thing? Lord, don't doesn't that count? No. No, it doesn't. Why? Because it says, and every one, well, verse 25, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Our faith should be founded on the rock of Jesus Christ. But get this, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Great was the fall of it. There's a lot of sandy religion out there that's not founded on any substance. There's a lot of sandy religion out there that right now their members are at home freaking out. They're scared to death. And the pastors are only offering these little words of encouragement out of a sermonette that they found from some other guy. And they're just regurgitating these weak little sermons to try to make people feel good. And they're not trying to build them on the rock. That's Jesus Christ. They're giving them a false hope and a false gospel. Now, all that to say this, in verse number 15 and 16, I'm going to dive into these false prophets to show that they are damned. Now, I want you to keep in mind many of the things we've talked about this morning. This is our Sunday school, so I'm kind of doing an expository teaching this, mo this morning because I want to lay into some of the heavy teaching in the Word of God so that we can be able to discern a good teacher from a false teacher. Verse 15, beware of false prophets. Jesus has warned us throughout the entire word of God. The entire word of God, there's false prophets. And the false prophet doesn't come to you looking like a wolf. The Bible says here, he comes to you in sheep's clothing, but inside he's a wolf. Inside, he's going to tear you apart. You know, when it talked about in verse number six, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Hey, guess what a dog is? A wolf. That's where we get many of our domesticated dogs today is from wolves. They're dogs. But inwardly, they're ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Now get this, because this is where our study is going to really begin. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs? of thistles or figs of thistles. Turn to Ezekiel chapter number two. Ezekiel chapter number two this morning in your Bible. Right after Lamentations and before the book of Daniel. 
Ezekiel chapter number two, Ezekiel two. <clears throat> and I'll tell you something, when, when people are out there preaching these false gospels, you don't need to be afraid of them. You don't need, you, you can just turn to the word of God and do battle with them. Why? By giving them the real gospel, the real truth. Verse number five, I'm going to start in verse number five for the sake of time. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall there be, no, I'm sorry, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. You should be able to know that there's a man of God when he's preaching the word of God. Why? And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Look, I'm not afraid of any of them. I'm not afraid to run into battle against any of these false teachers preaching a false gospel. Neither be afraid of their words, not scared. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their looks, though they be a rebellious house, and thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a most rebellious but thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be thou, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat what I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written there lamentations and mourning and woe. What did he give him? He gave him the word of God. That's the number one way you're going to be able to do battle with a false prophet or a false teacher. Be careful, be careful with the individual who's messed up in this. I always like to think of it like this. Many times when a Jehovah's Witness, and I use them a lot, they're the best example because I run into them the most, especially in this area. It's like they all retired to Inglewood and Port Charlotte. Um, <laughs> it's like they got a memo from the Watchtower and Track Society to, to settle here. Um, they'll always come with a new convert or someone they're trying to train up in their way. Usually the one doing the teaching or the preaching, normally that person has a really glazed look over their eye. But usually I'm usually the other one, the one that's sitting there, usually they, they're, they're listening to everything that is said. So we need to be real careful when we're doing battle with a false prophet that we don't hurt someone that can be reached. Because see, I believe a false prophet cannot be redeemed because they've made up their mind and they've crossed that threshold. Now let me prove it to you in the Bible quickly this morning. Turn to Hebrews chapter number five. Hebrews chapter number five. Hebrews chapter number five. <clears throat> and this is a call to many of us Christians today. Many of us need to open our Bibles not just for Sunday school or church this morning. Many of us need to open our Bibles and really stick to the plow of the Word of God so we can sow good seed. Verse number 12 of Hebrews chapter number 5. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Sometimes uh, I I think about all the pastors that I've I've served under, and and I think about uh, a lot of the the Christians that that have been saved for a long time, and and many of them have have never cracked open their Bible. Many of them are walking around with a bottle, a baby bottle in their hand, holding the pastor's hand, wanting them to tell them every move that needs to be made. They're not getting in the Word of God. They're not being teachers. They're not spreading the gospel. They're not doing anything. They're sucking their thumb, holding on to their baby blanket, and drinking out of a bottle when they need to get into the uh, severe meat or the strong meat of the Word of God. For everyone in verse 13 that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. We've been babies far too long in this American Christianity. It's about time we stand up and get strong and start getting in the word of God this morning. Verse 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those whose by re... Uh, 
even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. You have to exercise discernment. That's what it says, to discern both good and evil. You have to exercise discernment, godly discernment, what's right, what's wrong. You have to exercise in order to be in good shape, right? If you're going to run a race, if you're going to run the marathon of life, don't expect to get out there never exercising with the Word of God and expect to complete the race. You're not going to do it. You're not going to complete the race. Actually, in the same book, Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Wherefore, see, and we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. But you can't run that race unless you get in shape and drop the sin which or the weights that easily beset you and send you back, and then deal with the sin that's holding you back from running the marathon from giving out the word of God, from exercising, from eating the strong meat. Look, no marathon runner is drinking a baby bottle full of milk and then expecting to run 26 miles. No, he's going to eat protein. He's going to eat meat. Then he's going to get in the race and he's going to go. And the problem today is that too many of us are sitting on the couch eating chips off our chest, doing nothing for God, not even reading our Bible. Verse number six, I'm sorry, chapter six. Here's the problem. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Listen, I mean, I feel like American churches, all we've done is just regurgitate the same 15 sermons most of the time. Unfortunately, look, I'm not against that. I'm not against preaching the word of God, but I'll tell you right now, the people in the pew need to be fed some meat. They need to chew on a juicy steak of the word of God today. We don't need to always be fed the little feel good uh, message that you go out and, and then you forget about it later that day. You felt really good. You came in, you had a, a sensational feeling in church. And I'm not against the sensational feeling in church. I get one, whether it's meat, whether it's milk, no matter what it is, every time the word of God is open, I'm getting something out of it. But you know what? We, we don't need to keep laying the foundation of the same thing over and over again. It's time we as Christians start getting prepared for the marathon, the race of our life. And that's why so many Christians in America are falling aside now that this COVID-19 is running around. They're running around like a bunch of scared little kids when they guess what? You've got the Lord on your side. You don't need to be scared. Keep your faith and have faith toward God. Verse number two of the doctrine of baptism and laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this will do if God permit. But here's the thing. We'll teach those things if God will allow it. Verse number four, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Here's the problem. Many of these preachers that are false teachers have tasted of the good word of God. Many Jehovah's Witness know more about their Bible than you do, Baptist. No, many of the Mormons know more out of the Bible than you do, fellow Christians sitting in the pew. But the problem is they've only tasted a little bit of it. They haven't ingested it. They haven't eaten the roll. They haven't eaten the word of God. They haven't brought it into their belly. They're not living off of the word of God. They're not drinking the spiritual water. They just tasted of it and they rejected it. They were a partaker of the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost was calling on them. I'm just going to read a passage right here out of a chapter, uh, verse cha uh, chapter number three of Hebrews. I'm going to just go back. Verse number seven, the Bible reads, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of the provocation, in the day of the temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. 40 years. Skip down to verse number 17. 
But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not them? Not, was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hey, they tasted of the heavenly manna. Hey, they drank out of the actual rock, Jesus Christ, in the wilderness. When Moses hit the rock and they drank, they ate the manna from heaven and it was never enough for them. Why? Because they tasted of these things, but they never brought them into their heart. Never once did these things touch their heart. So once you have been given that opportunity to be saved, once you've given that opportunity to trust Jesus and you've rejected it, you've never taken that in to your heart. You've never feasted on the word of God. Therefore, when you go and you walk away and you leave, you've just made your choice. See if this doesn't sound familiar from last week. Verse number seven, for the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Listen, in Second Peter chapter two and in the book of Jude, it says wells without water, clouds without rain. You know, it's funny when you live here in Florida, if you don't water your lawn, you get a lot of weeds that just pop up out of nowhere. And you think, where did those come from? There's been no rain. The weeds just pop up like crazy. You can spray Roundup on them. You can do all these things. And these weeds just keep coming out of nowhere. But if you treat your lawn and you treat your yard the right way, fertilizing it, giving it the food, giving it the weed killer, you can get those things to go away. You can spray Roundup on them. You can get rid of the weeds. But guess what? Many of the weeds will still spring up. I liken that unto many of the tares that are going to grow up and, and grow with us until the end when God separates the wheat from the tares. But we need to remember to fertilize our hearts with the word of God, to feed on the word of God. Because guess what? That which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. Rejected. See, in Matthew chapter 7, they didn't bring forth good fruit. They brought forth thorns and they brought forth of figs of thistles, which is a briar. And guess what? They're going to be burned. But get, here's the thing, though. Hey, Christian, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. See, we need to remember as Christians today that there are going to be false teachers out there. But if we get in the word of God and we study to show, show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we get in the word of God and we let the Holy Spirit teach us and we get under the preaching of good, sound biblical doctrine, we don't have to worry about becoming a briar or a thorn and reject it. We can just do what we're supposed to because see, remember in the first part when I read it in chapter number five that we need to eat strong meat. Remember when I read that the things accompany salvation, we don't need to go back to remembering how to stop doing the dead works. You're a new creature. You got saved. I'm not saying there's not going to be temptation out there, but what I am saying is this. We need to just quit worrying about the foundation of dead works. Get busy doing the good works, doing the right thing, teaching the Christian that, hey, once you get saved, Saved, then you should get baptized. Hey, once you get saved, you should read the word of God. Hey, once you get saved, you should do unto others as you, as you would have them do unto you. Once you get saved, you should do these things because these are the things that accompany salvation. The first couple verses in this same chapter, because verse number 10 says, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Listen, see, there were many that said in that day, Lord, Lord, did I not do many works in your name? Hey, they may have done a lot of good works. Mother Teresa did a lot of good works, but she didn't have her faith in Jesus and him alone. She put her faith in Mary. She put her faith in the Pope. She put her faith in all the saints. She put her faith everywhere. 
everywhere but in Jesus and Jesus alone. Lord, Lord, did I not do these things in your name? And what does Jesus say? Depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is a funny word. It means equal or equity. I always liken it unto balances. Throughout the Bible, the Lord says a true and just balance and true and just weight are his delight. I may have misquoted it. But see, the iniquity is this. Didn't I do many <clears throat> works in your name? Wow, you're doing really well as you exalted yourself. Didn't I cast out devils in your name? Hey, you that works iniquity, quit trusting in your works. Because your scale is not based upon you judging yourself against your fellow Christian, whether or not you're going to get to heaven. Your judgment should be how you stack up against the Lord. In every one of these briars, and every one of these thorns <clears throat> will teach you the same thing, and that is your own works get you to heaven. <clears throat> your own works. God's not going to forget the good works from the saved individual. He's going to take care of us. He's going to meet our needs. And we need to remember in this time of trouble that's going on in the world today, instead of hoarding toilet paper, instead of hoarding baby wipes, instead of going in and buying all the last little bit of ground beef, I was looking for that the other day, instead of going in and buying all the milk and the eggs and the orange juice and the vitamin C and all these things, hey, why don't we just buy those things and distribute them to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who, who need those things Amen. need those things quit worrying about hoarding it up for yourself God's gonna meet our needs and he's gonna meet our needs as a church and right now there are a lot of thorns and briars running around just gobbling up people's money promise them liberty but they themselves are the servants of sin they're, they're running around wells without water. They have no eternal life. They're just trying to get people to do good works, to get to heaven, to earn their own salvation. And we need to just remember to continue doing the things that accompany salvation. That means go along with our salvation. One of the best things that we can do as a Christian, one of the thing, one of the best fruits we can do is the Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that win his souls is wise. Let's take this opportunity to win our family to Jesus Christ. Look, the, the, these can be really tough things to go over. But I'm trying to prepare you because deception's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. The Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I don't know why God continues to lay this deception on my heart. But you know what? There's coming a time when God's going to take the Christian out of here and God's going to remove us. And there's going to be no glorious light of the gospel or very little of it left. And the Bible also reads in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, and for this cause... God shall send a strong delusion. God's going to send a delusion in the end times as well. And we can start to see that unfold even today, that there's a delusion circling many of the minds of many of the people around the world today. So let's keep in our hearts this morning, Pastor Fred and his wife, Brother Don Moore, as he may, I, I hope he's out of the hospital the one with cancer that David brought, and many more. We all have family, friends, and loved ones. I know that uh, there's Marion from our church. I know that there's um, Brother Harry, Miss Fran. I mean, there's just so many that are, are struggling this morning. But we need to remember God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let's keep our wits about ourselves. Let's close in prayer and let's just remember these. In Jesus' name, we need to remember these things and pray for them. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to preach your word, to teach it, to strengthen your people, that we may chew on some meat. Lord, I know this was a bit rushed this morning. The message that I was going to preach this morning in Sunday school will now be the main message. Lord, I just ask that you be with our people. Lord, help them not to worry, to have anxiety or fear. And Lord, I know there's so many. I know there's so many prayer requests that probably came through during, during the course of this sermon or this study. I know there's people out there that are hurting. They're hurting financially. They're hurting physically. They're hurting spiritually. Lord, I ask that you'd meet with each one of them. Lord, help everyone out there to beware of false prophets and teachers. They just want to tear them to shreds. They just want to rip them up. Take. They never give. And Lord, I just ask that you meet with our members this morning. Meet with those that we are praying for. Touch their hearts, Lord. Touch their bodies. And if it be your will, Lord, help them to be able to be a testimony to who they come in contact with, that they may win others to Christ. Lord, help each one of us to bear fruit. Lord, help us to, to lead others to Jesus Christ, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.